dropped real early. I wanted to go live a bit earlier so I could talk about what's been happening, but it's already dropped. So let me do the very quick version of what I wanted to show off, which is Hussie's new shenanigans. Um, what is his Twitter called? He's a new Twitter again. Oh, it's on his Instagram. Okay, um, let me bring this over here and open up display. So, four fans released a bunch of new merch. Oh, look, they have a little banner for it now. That wasn't here a minute ago. Or maybe it was. Uh, we got the pleading face, we got the demon shirt and hoodie, but then we got, um, the masks. And the thing with the masks, they're great, and they're designed by Maggie. This is the only one Psycholonials merch that has a designer, I believe. Yeah. Maggie's great. Maggie is, um, Macus' friend. Um, they're a really good pick if Hussie's already putting together Art Team 3.0 after all that's happened this year. Okay. He's also launched a new clothing line of K-pop faces. It is exactly the same as, um, his link in bio. Oh, it is his, his link tree. Yep. It's exactly the same as, um, the Cosmos, Troubled Cosmos, but now it's K-pop. Just doing it again. So that's something. And it's led to, um, uh, this, which, I mean, yeah, there's the thumbnail right there. Unless something happens, it's not. Okay, um, let me bring this over. Oh, switch to the game. Is the update downloaded? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's live, I know that. Bear with me here. We have it. I don't think we have it. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to wait like 10 minutes for it to... Yeah. It's out. It's on Steam DB. Let me check the Steam DB again. It um doubled the size of the game. So I'll I'll talk about what I was gonna talk about while we wait. Um people did the math with the recommended specs of the game and Hussey's 40 minutes of animation estimate and X amount of images, and people kind of pieced together that we almost have like 40% of the game left, which is a lot. Um, especially animation. There's like 20 minutes of animation we haven't seen yet. And that theory seemed to be just be confirmed because this last chapter is the size of every other chapter before it. So, buckle up. That's probably why it released early, because this is probably going to be a double-sized chapter or even longer. I'm going to try to force Steam to update. Let's see how I can... Maybe if I verify the integrity of the cash. Someone got it. Some One of my friends is already booting it up. Uh, properties. Up dot. Um... Beta? No. Try to verify the integrity of the cache and see if that does it. It's just like the first episode again, where it's not coming out successfully. It's a callback. Okay, yeah, we got it. 600 megabyte update. <laughs> and the game was only 500 megabytes before this. Um, the Steam page has a new screenshot. I won't show it, but it's got a new screenshot. We'll see if we show- if it doesn't show up in the update, I'll go and show it to you guys. But he updated the Steam page with images from each chapter now, so it's more encompassing of the full game. Uh, da -da -da. let's see, new screenshots. 15 minutes ago, store asset updated. 10 hours ago was the beta. Then, 10 minutes ago. The public depot plus 500 megabytes plus 900 megabytes. Wow. Happy 420, everyone. <laughs> well, let's see. What, what do you, let's talk about what we think will happen. I think it's very weird that there's this much left. 
because the last chapter, it ended on a note that I think it could have ended. I think that could have been it. It was, um, if you don't remember, Z and Abby were back, were about to, um, we were, were did their speech where they, they, um, so, so much happening. She got on a monologue and declared war against the United States, and they came in with a stealth bomber about to kill them. Abby already did her arc of wanting to leave and then coming back and having the heartfelt I'm back moment before the bomber appeared. Z's already solved all the stuff with her parents, really. That wasn't played up as much as I thought it would. Her being cancelled wasn't played up as much as I thought it would. She's already at the end of the... Like, all that's left is for the government to bomb everything and for riotous to say, And now you've learned your lesson. You can't have the revolution by pure brute force. You must spend time uniting people in peace before the violence. And then that's it. That's the end of the game. I have seen people... Um, most people are saying Terezi scarf theory. When John gets the scarf and he's retconning through all the different moments, we're going to go back to each time Riotus gave us, or whoever that voice is, gave us a choice. And we're going to get to see what would have happened if Z had even the slightest bit of self-control. How wonderful things would have gone. Let's see if we have it now. We have it! Oh my god, look at that image! Buckle up! A sword and a crown. I thought you left. I was going to, but I couldn't leave you behind like this. Abby, I think I fucked everything up. The fucking speech I just gave. Yeah, I saw it. Um, wow? This was never the plan. I was never gonna do it like that. I think... I think I just fucked the whole country. There's gonna be a huge civil war or something in this island. Oh god, everyone here's gonna die. And it's all my fault. I don't... I don't... I don't... I can't... I... Ooh. That's kind of poor taste. No, I don't... Abby, I think I'm having another mental breakdown. But instead of ruining my own life, I'm taking everyone in the world down with me. It's okay, just try to breathe. We can think of something. You should just go. Save yourself. I couldn't bear it. I had a good Z voice two weeks ago and it's gone. I couldn't bear to see you get bombed along with everyone else. Just go to the South Korea and marry the rat monster or something. No, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to help you through this. Honestly, I don't know what can be done at this point. You may not be able to fix this. The whole situation is probably going to unravel very quickly. All I know is, this is so bad for you, Z. It's been hurting you, and even if you stayed and tried to lead everyone out of this mess, I don't think you're in the right condition for that. So what are you saying I do? I think you need to take care of yourself. This is way beyond either of our ability to control now. If you keep trying, I think it's just going to destroy you, and I couldn't live with myself if I let that happen. Are you telling me to just give up and go with you? Yeah, please come with me. Whatever happens, I don't want to do it alone. But I can't just leave. Everybody's depending on me. If I just fuck off like that, I'll, I'll leave this insane vacuum of power and all hell will break loose. All hell already has broken loose. But that, if I... The amount of chaos that my absence will... <laughs> You're hyperventilating again. This has to stop. Look, Z, I'm gonna fix this for you, but you have to trust me. Can you do that? I... I, I don't know if... Y yes, please have me fix this. I'm so Okay, then. G give me those. Missile bip. Here, these are yours now. <laughs> it's a baby with a gun. Z is appointing you as the new supreme hot effects of the Jubilite movement. <laughs> Z is going to text you all of the login data for the important accounts. You'll need to run this operation from now on, won't you, Z?
<laughs> yeah. Once you have everything, it's very important you change all the passwords as soon as possible. This is all your responsibility now. You've earned our trust, and we know you will take it seriously. Aw, I'm just a bit crying. <laughs> with the gun back there. That's a classic little hussy arm. That's great. <laughs> now come on, we have to hurry. I, I have a jet ready to go before I, come, I decide to come back. We can probably still catch it if we move fast. But I, I don't know if I can go to Korea, don't you see, Abby? It's different for, more than, for me than you. If I run away, I'm probably going to be hunted for the rest of my life. I made so many enemies, they'll want to kill me. And if you have no idea if your K-pop boys will be able to grant me immunity. Well, who said anything about Korea? We don't have to go there. We can go anywhere in the world. Like, some remote, just bury ourselves somewhere and forget about all this. Like, where? Anywhere you want. Like another island away, further away. You can run away for real this time. Like you originally were trying to. Anywhere? Even f f f Fiji? Yeah, Fiji sounds great, but we really have to go now. The sooner we go, the more likely we can avoid getting shot down by military aircraft. What if they track us? I already made plans with the pilot. We're gonna switch planes in Bermuda, then head west and switch again in Hawaii. After that, it was headed to Korea, but we can easily change the final destination. Now come on, I'll drive to the airport. Okay, just give me a second. Abby has successfully wrapped Z into her, uh, uh, her shipping fantasy here. Supreme Hot Effects Mizzle Bip, we're all counting on you. I know you won't let me down, Godspeed. <laughs> Time to go! Oh, full art. Mizzle Bip, new protagonist. Riotus comes before Mizzle Bip. You are the true successor, Mizzle Bip! Mizzle Bip's just like, okay. Oh no! <laughs> Mizzle Dip's going full Gamzy on us! <laughs> Mizzle Bip playing the long con! Sober Mizzle Bip. They're just gonna blow up right here. On it now. Aww. No, oh, there they go. I have no idea where this game is going. That should be the end. The credits should be rolling. If you move this scene to the end of the last chapter, that's the end of the game. This chapter didn't need to exist, but there's obviously more happening. Aww. Chigazi and Blurter makeup. Symbolic. Abby's getting her dream life of spending the rest of her life on a secluded island with Z.
Oh, the chests. What? Is that supposed to be Mizzlebip getting the choices now, or is the successor unlocked? Dream sequence. I'm gonna see the sword finally. Oh. Hussy clouds. I like the way you draw clouds, Hussy. That's a whole, whole uh, form sprint reference. Reference in multiple. Oh, that's how we got. Wow, I forgot we haven't seen this place yet. It's Fiji. Dream Fiji. Oh my god. Galaxy Swirl Eyes. So she's successoring by fleeing? Is that how you become a successor? You give up and pass it on to someone else? Mask, please sell that mask. Oh, Between your three flights, you spent almost 24 hours in the air. You swapped planes at each stop to cover your tracks. Abby set it all up in advance. She chartered the planes, made the payments, and you were off. Your nerves were high on the initial takeoff for fear you might get shot down, but the military planes never even came near you. A simple passenger jet taking off in the darkness heading southeast. Maybe it wasn't worth their time, or maybe an invasion was never even imminent at all. You took off west from Bermuda just before daybreak. You swept across a burning nation and rode the edge of dawn all the way to Hawaii. The sun outpaced your plane across the sky by a bit, making for one long sunrise following you on your journey. A lovely view, but you slept through most of it. You were very tired. 
We landed in Fiji sometime in the afternoon. We didn't know which airport or even which of the roughly 300 islands that comp comprise the nation. All you know is, it's a beautiful day, and as far as you can tell, hardly anyone here could give a shit about the clown revolution that's consuming the rest of the world. To bypass COVID-19 travel restrictions, Abby arranged a series of ludicrously expensive bribes in advance, while you were both still in flight. Then once off the tarmac to clear custom, she produced two fake passports out of thin air, one for each of you. I wonder how long she's been preparing for a getaway like this. How long she's been scared enough to think about such things. You feel so bad. You acquired a car and now drive around the island a bit. No destination in particular. Wherever you go, you're half expecting to see signs that the global unrest has seeped into society here as well, but there's none of that, just people living their lives. Strange how the crazy thing you started was simultaneously a global event that's currently ripping the world apart at its seams, yet also a bubble, as if it was just something you always had the power to log off from, and the moment you do, it starts to feel like all along it was a hot mess of nothing much whatsoever. As if the litigation of the entire entirety of human civilization was little more than a tempest in a teapot set to boil a few two minutes long. You find an unattended beach so you can unwind before you decide what to do next. Before you ask yourselves, what even is there left to do? What's happening out there, or do I even want to know? A ton of crazy shit, where do I even start? I guess I'm all wondering if it's as bad as I think. I have no idea if it's even bad, I don't think anyone does yet. We don't really know what the consequences of this global shakeup will be. Oh, that's a loud. That's a little louder than the rest of Catch that a bit. I get that, I just mean war is bad, generally speaking. I'm trying not to read anything about it because I'm too worried too many people are going to die because of this. There doesn't seem to be much reporting on that yet. The entire country seems to have broken out into a bunch of localized turf struggles. Is there even a country anymore? If you're asking if America has fallen, not yet. Not officially, at least. I think American media is in denial about it. They're all like, I'm not owned, I'm not owned! But America's fucking owned. There's probably no going back from this. <laughs> Drill reference, very good. Back from what, though? What are all these turf struggles? The entire US has splintered into a patchwork of regions under Jubilate control. Almost the entire Pacific Northwest is ceded territory. I'm not even sure if the government is trying to challenge that secession yet, since there's no reports of forces entering that region. Like, the US military is huge, but the reality of an all-out civil war is also huge, and I think it's impossible to realistically contain the whole thing at once, no matter how big the military is. So it looks like they're focusing efforts on keeping the rest of the map from disintegrating, putting out all the smaller fires everywhere else. Like, look, CNN has a map of all the regions claiming independence, which they keep updating, but I think this is a conservative visualization. I guess as corporate media is doing its part to tamp down on this, keep everybody feeling like it's not a big deal as it looks and it'll all blow over soon, but I don't think that'll work. You can't really bullshit your way through subduing a revolution way more than you can with this pandemic. Especially since other nations are getting involved in fortifying the revolt. Reinforcements are flowing in from the northwest from the Socialist Republic of Rimzave. What's that? That's what they call Russia now. Oh my god. Yeah, so... Now troops from that nation and probably a bunch of others are gathering on what was formerly American soil. Reminds me of how we started importing our own rebels to the island. Once we did that, there was no way for the government to reverse the trend without causing a nightmare scenario. Speaking of which, what's happening in Nantucket? Or, excuse me, New Whimsafay. Well, the good news is the island never got bombed like I was afraid would happen, at least as far as I can tell. But on the drive to the airport, we saw fires everywhere. Yeah, I think that was all from localized skirmishes, not from an outward assault by the military. Results of factional infighting were probably sparked by the CIA's weird covert op, but the actual US military never launched a full invasion or bombing campaign at least. Not yet, at least. My guess is they're still hanging back and waiting to see if the CIA coup would just get us all to tear each other apart on the island and do the work for them, so they didn't even have to invade or bomb, which, uh, sort of what happened, actually. It sure seems like it, but I wonder if there are drones were spying on the insane battle that destroyed my house. Oh, I'm sure they did. The CIA guys back in DC are probably all high-fiving over it. But also, I suspect the main reason the government is reluctant to outright bomb the island is they're all worried about it being seen as, like, bombing a holy site. Something that would incite more radicalism and rebellion than they're already dealing with. They probably want to know, keep with New Whimsafe as a chip to play later. Ow. I think it goes back to that treaty I signed. They may hold out hope that something like that is still possible. 
I'm gonna get the rebellion under control and say, look, you idiot clowns can solve your stupid island if you just fucking stop. But I think that's naive. This is a lot of toothpaste you can't put back in the tube now. I'm sure my crazy speech seriously alarmed them, and it definitely sparked this rebellion, but... Now that I'm gone, they're probably hopeful that another leader can be reasoned with. You mean Mizzlebip? No, Mizzlebip's dead. What? She was apparently assassinated. Happened some time while we were flying over the Pacific. Was it the CIA? I don't think so. It looks like there was a different coup from within. A new guy has claimed the title of Supreme Hot Effects. It's some clown I never even heard of. Here, look. This is worrying me. What am I going to click and see? What is that little rat boy? Professor Chucklefuck? Is that Sans? Who is this? Who the hell is that? No idea. Ring 3 was totally wiped out. Wait a sec! That's, uh... <laughs> that's the guy from, um... Whistles! That's the villain of... Where's the villain of Whistles? Wow, that's a pull. Where is he? Where is he? Is he on the cover? Yes, he is on the cover. Okay, I gotta, I gotta show you. I gotta show ya. It's this guy. <laughs> That's great. That is a that is a that is a reach and a half. That is great. All right, what's the game? Okay. So this is probably just some bozo a little further down the ladder. He saw his shot and took it. Jesus Christ. I don't know. She's completely just off the rails now. Are you sure this isn't the part of some CIA plot? The fact that these agents were involved at all makes me really suspicious. Yeah, something about that. Can't really put my finger on it. What? It was fucking weird. It never really added up to me. On the plane, I, I couldn't stop thinking. Why would undercover CIA agents be carrying badges that just have CIA printed on them in big fucking letters? I guess so they could prove what they were to each other? But think about it. These are supposedly the best in the business. If you would go undercover, I don't think you're supposed to have any signs of your true identity at all. Guys get, like, tortured and shit and over shit like that. It just seems like amateur. And the fucking photo. What about it? Hang on a minute, I need to check something. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. What? Look, it's the first result for CIA stock image. Wait. I gotta close this. It keeps knocking me out. This dude is the first fucking photo in this Google image search for CIA agent, AI agent stock photo. God damn it, Mizzlebip. <laughs> Wait, you're saying Mizzlebip faked the CIA badge? I think that's probably what happened. I don't think she pulled it off a body at all. So those weren't CIA guys. I mean, probably not. Do the math here. If she printed out a badge to fuck with me, then suddenly the only piece of hard evidence I had to respect a CIA coup was in the first place was a fake. They were probably just a bunch of guys she managed to rope into the mutiny. I, I bet they didn't even realize she was framing them as Asians. Oh, God. And then she just ended up, me, ended up helping me gun them down, that conniving bitch. Wow, are, are you really sure about this theory? It, it all seems so confusing suddenly. I mean, no, I'm not sure of anything now. Another possibility would be that there was a real, a really a CIA plot, which Mizzlebip knew about somehow, and she just opportunistically manipulated the situation and let me know about the plot right the exact moment when she was sure I would react in the way she wanted. If that's true, like, if there really was a CIA plot brewing, I wonder if the CIA thought they were comp they compromised her because she let them think that. She let them believe they had an agent on the inside, so she could keep playing both sides of the fence at once. That we should get intel from the CIA people on what they were planning, while still having access to all our inside plans. Damn, what the fuck? Who was this clown? I thought Jocelyn was bad. Jocelyn did nothing on this bitch. Well, she was certainly a next level type of snake if she actually did everything you just said, but she's dead now, so I don't think this is actually worth getting that stressed about. I know, I'm just... Ugh, this is frustrating. I think I just let myself get hooked me down by my own shit. Like, I just, I just prank just to myself. What a fucking idiot I was. See, I found this badge. Um, it says CIA. Does that mean anything to you? Oh, thanks, Missile Bip. Great detective work there. Oh, I can't believe a fucking gold lady to been. Hey, try to relax. Uh, remember, this wasn't about you getting tricked out of your leadership position. This is about you making a decision to do what's best for your mental health. It doesn't even matter that more lying assholes are plotting against you. In fact, it just proves you did the right thing. You really needed to get out of that snake pit while you still could remember. Could. It was killing you, remember? Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I know all that, Abby. This was the right move, but it's just gonna hurt for a while. Even if it was for the best. 
I work so hard on all that. I put so much of myself into it and just turn into whatever the fuck just happens. It'll get easier with time. We're so far away from all that now, you can ignore it. Well, it's a complete train wreck. I'm not sure I'll be able to look away from it, even if I wanted to, because it's my train wreck. Why would I ignore it? It's basically my life's fucking work. Are you saying I should completely tune it out? I think it'll be okay to check in with the progress of the world sometimes. You don't have to completely tune out forever. Once you're feeling better, you might even find it's fun to watch, like try to focus on the good things that came of it. It'll be like a crazy show happening on the world stage that we can follow as spectators for the rest of our lives. And if there are good things that come of it, you can take some satisfaction in that. I just don't know if I can have the same level of attachment from it as you. You're treating it like some show or whatever. It's not a show, it's the fucking planet. It's billions of people's lives. Oh, I, I know, I'm not trying to trivialize, trivialize, triv trivialize what we did. I just... Part of me is so relieved for us to be out of that situation. I'm just looking for any silver lining I can, lol. Well, that's fine for you, but frankly this was all my shit, not yours. And I'm not looking for like coping methods or self-care bullshit to pull me through this. I just doubt I'll be able to f fully shrug off my compl complicity. complicity. One moment. Mainly, I just hope some good comes of it. Like, who knows, maybe I actually did destroy capitalism? Maybe, we just have to wait and see. I feel funny thinking that. But examining what I actually wanted to see result from this. I think it's forcing me to look at this a little closer, try to figure out why I was doing it. Sitting here now, it sure doesn't feel like it was making the world a better place. It was probably just the only way I could think to express myself. After years of pain and trauma and running away from shit, mostly it was a lot of anger. And my parents, and all the antis who terrorized me. Almost feels like it was about everything but doing something idealistic. I think that tracks. The need to share things with the world, like art or any kind of content. It comes from a lot of crazy places. It's not like my influencer stuff was about anything principled or that worthwhile to the world. I think I just enjoyed the idea of having so many people care about what I was doing. <laughs> I don't even think there's anything wrong with you just admitting I like the attention. It was fun. Yeah, it really was, for a while at least, until I got nuts and possibly ruined human civilization forever. <laughs> Come on, no it didn't. I mean, yeah, probably not. In the end, it's just another one of humanity's many upheavals. In the grand scheme of history, maybe these moments are a dime a dozen, just that we happen to be living through it, not even to speak of being directly responsible for it. So, excuse me if I may be inclined to wax philosophical on exactly what the fuck just happened. Like, was it good? Bad? If it's bad, why? What went fucking wrong? I feel like I've been asking myself these things for weeks, but <laughs> as you said, it's your shit, not mine, so what do you think happened? I think... I still think... We were right about everything. <laughs> we were right about this start this movement. Right to revolt against our shitty, horrible country. Right to take a stand against capitalism. Right to stand, say, the imperialist origins of America and lots of other countries are the root of most evils we currently face. But most of all, of all, we were just right to fight. To stop rolling over and taking whatever shit they fucking gave us. What went wrong was, like, everything else. Like, what? Like these fucking people, these snakes and interlopers, saboteurs, clout chasers, power grabbers, liars, and backstabbers. I mean, I get it now. All this left-wing shit I've been ranting about isn't just wrong on its merits, it, it usually goes like this. These infuriatingly stupid fuckers get all together in the natural configuration they'll gravitate towards each other as a bunch of circular firing squads over and over and over. Yeah, that's exactly what kept happening to us. <laughs> So you think it's really like a universal thing? Not something we did fucked up? I don't know, maybe. I saw stuff firsthand that like... I kept asking myself, how many other assholes in history were dealing with exactly this shit? Or watching things unravel for the exact same basic reasons, even before there was social media? How much of our attraction to our movement was propelled by the weird attention-seeking narcissism that clout chasers think they need so badly? But weren't those kinds of clout chasing dynamics in play during other periods, like power, fame, and influence, are all kind of the same no matter what period you look at or what the platforms resemble? Okay, there's a Kojima in that image. I just want to point that out. Hideo Kojima is there while she talks about your memes, the DNA of the soul. How can that sort of mass vanity pouring into a scene not end up perverting movements like ours, warping it into some sort of sleazy racket? 
not even a money racket, but worse somehow, like a fucked up ego rack. Ego racket is hey um, uh, is it ego racket that uh, YouTuber that did the animations or that doesn't do the animations anymore? <laughs> Isn't he that grumpy guy? <laughs> Kojima. There's a Kojima in the sky. That Kojima image has been Mackin's profile picture since last year. There's a Mackin in the sky. I'm Mackin. No, I'm kidding. Where was the point I stopped being able to tell the difference between fighting for a just cause and feeding my own ego as the supreme hot effects? I could probably think on it for the rest of my life and not be able to tell you when or how that happened. So you think this spun out of control because, like, we went too far or you got too violent or something? You think the real problem is the natural incoherence of such movements were always bound to inevitably surface? Because people are just nuts and jump into it for all the wrong reasons. Abby, do you mind if I say the theme of this story a few more times? Did you know it's exactly what Sky said at the beginning? You can't just jump right into violent uprising. There has to be a natural progression to getting people to actually understand the ideals of it all. Yeah, pretty much. Hmm, so what do you think the solution is? Well, if I knew that, I sure wouldn't be sitting here on this beautiful fucking Fiji beach. <laughs> maybe it's good you don't know then. I don't know, if I had to take a stab at it, maybe the problem really was just me. Ah, uh, come on, no it wasn't. Nothing at all would have happened without you. I don't mean me personally, I just mean a leader in general. I believed in what I was doing, but putting myself at the center of it all was fucking up my brain too much, and so it fucked up the movement too. Maybe there shouldn't even be leaders. I guess maybe nothing ever would ever really get done if that were true, but at the same time, the whole cult of personality thing really fucking sucks. <laughs> yep, I don't know, Z. Call me crazy or overly optimistic, but I'm still hopeful everything will be okay once all these revolutions settle down. I still want to believe humanity can figure things out for itself if given the chance. Maybe all it needed was a little push, a push only you could give it. I'd be more willing to LOL it off just like you and say, yeah, this was all a big goof too far, but everything will probably turn out okay later. But there's this creepy feeling I can't shake about this. What? It's not like this- It's not like all this shit came out of nowhere. These dreams I kept having. What if it wasn't just my disturbed brain making it all up? What if Riotus was real? Um, anything's possible, I guess. What would it even matter if he was? Did I just inadvertently help an alien colonize Earth with a lot of batshit clown philosophies? Am I the useful idiot in another insidious imperialist campaign? I was too stupid to realize I was his pawn because I was caught up in the idea that it was all coming from me. There are a lot of ways you could decide to worry about all this, but this one seems pretty out there to be honest. I don't know. I don't really think they were just dreams, but they may not have been literal messages from an alien either. Maybe I can't explain what I mean. He could have been a product of my deranged imagination, but there are times when I catch myself dozing and jump out of my sleep with a sudden terrorizing thought that he might be the one who's dreaming instead of me. That's a pretty much- oh, that's a much crazier and more paranoid thought than if you just wanted to believe he was a real alien. To save your humanity, maybe you should believe he's real and not worry about it? What would even be the harm of that? So a clown talked to you in your sleep and convinced you to help him take over the world by proxy, with like, clown lore instead of ships and guns. That's kinda cool, actually. And it also sorta lets you off the hook. If you were under the influence of some sinister alien force, then no matter how this keeps playing out, it wasn't due to bad intentions on your part. Regardless of my intentions, I mean, imperialism is still bad, right? No matter what form it takes, that's one of the things I kept hammering in my manifesto. Practically all evils on Earth right now seem to stem from it. The further back you trace everything, hell, isn't that what we're doing now just more colonialism? What, sitting here on this island? Do it, Abby. Say the title, Abby, do it. I mean, Z, Z, say the title. Yeah, I mean, moving here, just another couple of Westerners invading this island paradise in the Pacific because I just thought it sounded cool. Like, this is basically how that happens, isn't it? Little by little, indigenous populations are displaced and native cultures are conquered. But that's not why we're here. It's not a vacation, and we certainly didn't do it because we thought it was cool. We're basically fucking fugitives right now. We have to live somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's just how it always is. Nobody can ever relocate to somewhere else in the world without passively participating in something vaguely evil. But most of these people can hardly stand to stay put where they are either. So what are we even supposed to do? The whole history of the globe is just a long chronicle of hysterical people running away from shit. Away from the persecution of assholes or the problems from their own making. 
It's hard to even blame all those Europeans for running across the ocean to get away from the plagues and famines and shitty kings ruining their own countries, but the more they piled onto the new continent, the more they turned it into a huge graveyard for the people they were visiting. And if that wasn't enough, then they set up shop, put up bright neon lights telling the world this is the place where all the good shit happens. Vibes of your homeland are rancid, come here. We gentrified the place already, buried the squatters, and found we found when we got here. Now you can do whatever you want. Go nuts! And that marketing effort worked. It kept bringing more and more people in, people in on the run from their pain and traumas, and once they arrived, they just perpetuate the misery that came before, while simultaneously becoming fresh victims to it. That's what was so weird about it. You run away to a new country to find a better life, and just become complicit in the evil of its original settlement. Yet you also become a victim of its false promises. You got lured in by its bait, and then it runs you into the fucking ground with all the other bodies that were sacrificed to serve this lie. My parents were just another couple of sacrifices, enticed to America when they were young and running away from shit. They took the bait, and the nation utterly destroyed them. If any country in the history of the world deserved to get fucked up this badly, it was ours. Yeah, I, I felt the same way at times, but it wasn't as personal for me, obviously. Just a thought I had every now and then, maybe due to feeling guilty for having so much. I wonder if people in other countries end up feeling the same way about wherever they're born. Like, this is just the worst place on Earth. Someone needs to come along and fuck it up. Maybe. All I can speak to is where I'm from and how I felt about it. I dream about them, actually. Huh? My parents. While well, sleeping on the plane. Yeah? It's the first time I dreamt about them in a long time that wasn't horrifying. Like some stress dream about my mom or some foolish body horror about my dad. It was very peaceful, actually. They said they were proud of me. Oh, well, you certainly did something noteworthy. I bet they would be really proud. Yeah, but probably not in the way you think. When I said America destroyed them, I really meant that. It got my dad chasing some idealized version of capital success that he could never quite catch. Went after it so hard his health fell apart and he dropped dead. My mom went insane and so did I, kinda. They all had their broken dreams riding on me. And when I self-destructed the final hope of realizing success through a family legacy died too. Then finally my mom got finished off by a disease our psychopathic country had no ability or even desire to contain. So when they told me they were proud of me for doing what I did to America, it's not because I managed to reach levels of success they never could. <laughs> it's because they wanted revenge! <laughs> well, if that's what they think you accomplished, I don't think anyone can argue with that. All I know is no matter what it is you accomplished, whether it was fucking up America or making a super popular clown-themed Instagram account, I'm proud of you too, Z. Actually, Abby, I was just thinking of going by Shen now. Oh? Z is the name of a fugitive and a war criminal. Probably unwanted list in most countries. It's also the name of an angry teen. Someone who programmed our by our crappy country to feel ashamed of where my family came from. Conditioned to cooperate in that erasure or even like want to help our nation overwrite the cultures it absorbs. It's the name of a kid who resented her parents. But the only reason I resented them is because the country fucked them up just as bad as it fucked up me. And I took the brunt of the stress and madness that caused it for them. Jen is the name they gave me and... I don't hate them anymore. What? Oh, nothing. It just feels so nice to hear you say all this. I'm just here to listen. What the fuck? Huh? It says Professor Chucklefuck is dead. Uh, already? Yeah, looks like another fucking assassination plot, but he just took over. God damn, there's some other girl claiming Supreme Hot Effect status now. <laughs> Sugarberry 7. Are there like six other Sugarberries? At least. That's an informal registry of clown sonas. Lots of people end up picking the same names by coincidence through the registry tax on Roman numerals. I don't even know that much. I don't even know that. God, it's all so much to keep track of. Yeah, they love it, though. People end up embracing their numerals. It makes them sound more legit, like a bunch of self-important fucking clown poops running around. I guess nobody did that with our names. No, the Registry blacklisted ours. Everyone in Ring Fee, actually. Oh shit, is this bitch serious? What? I'm seeing comments indicating that other Jubilites named Sugarberry are ending up dead. 
Oh, for fuck's sake, is she already going like on a worldwide sugarberry purge? Guess so. What an absolute fucking dumpster fire this all is. Yep, I'm telling you, the cult of fucking personality. Putting these bozos are holding their breath waiting for a good clown to rise out of all this flaming circus wreckage? Uh, I think they're gonna be real disappointed. Uh, I hate this. I know it's frustrating, but we don't have to be looking at any of you, you know? <laughs> what? It's just so ridiculous! The idea of blood- is that the zoo smell panel? I mean, I guess you're right, because what the fuck else is there to do now? It just seems so incredibly American of us. What? What does? Ignoring it? Yeah, making a royal fucking mess of a place, and washing our hands of it all. As if to say, well, not our problem anymore. That's true, but if you keep looking at it, at least you're in the short term, all you're really doing is torturing yourself for no good reason. I know, it's so hard to fully tear away myself from it, though. I keep thinking of what I could have done differently. And how much there was writing on getting this right, like seeing some of the pitfalls in advance, like the treachery and insanity of others. Sure, you could have had more foresight and dodged certain bullets, but think of it this way. If you were better at that kind of stuff, it would have just meant you were trapped in that scene much longer. I guess so. Some leaders manage to stay in power for a long, long time, but that's probably only because they get really good at always looking over their shoulder, identifying who are the rats are in advance, dealing with them in much earlier. Like, certain types of dictators or old Roman emperors made an art form out of staying in power by doing anything imaginable, no matter how nasty, just to keep themselves alive. But how is that any way to live? What does that do to your soul? It- Oh! Thanks, Pap- Thanks for the follow, Paps Daps. It probably just slowly destroys it. And you have a good soul. It'd be so sad to watch it slip away. Yeah, you're, pri you're absolutely right. Of course I know all this. I'm just kind of venting about this huge earth-wrecking, venting sus debacle that also happens to be entirely my responsibility. And you keep like, ugh, it's so shitty for me to even be frustrated. The completely insane amount of patience and understanding and compassion you show for me no matter how much I fuck up, I don't even understand, I suck so bad, Abby. Why the fuck could I have possibly done to deserve so much support from you? Why do you keep acting like it's worth saving so much, so much energy trying to save me from my own stupid shit? You know why? Will Z be able to feel love for the first time? I think maybe I think maybe I've been doing a lot of stuff that's unfair to you. I've been constantly so far up my own ass about like world affairs and managing my circle of clown idiots that I've been callously blowing off all your feelings about no um, everything. I feel like I've fucked with you so much, taking your trust and friendship for granted. I think I, think I owe you a good conversation about how I feel about a lot of things, like us. There's nothing inside me when it comes to that that isn't true. I'm just still so emotionally blocked up by all this stuff. I'm still deeply and profoundly sad about everything I just left behind. Like, I let something incredible slip through my fingers. And combined with everything else about my past that hurts, it leaves me feeling broken inside. So I really do want to talk to you about this, but it may take a long time for me to heal enough to do that. Make sense? <laughs> yeah, I understand. I think I always knew that that's how you felt. I never wanted to push it. Just know that I'm here for you anytime you feel ready to open up. Take all the time you need, I'm not going in. <laughs> Where would I even go? We already ran away together. The rest is up to you. Your eyes return to the cynically magnetic pull of your phone. The little rectangle that's a limitless portal to the most maddening, stupid, and terrible things you'll ever read in your life. It just so happens now that the stupid and terrible things are mostly caused by you. Throw it in the ocean, Z. Just throw it in the ocean. As the new Supreme Han effects, it looks like Sugarberry7 is trying to take the cake. She's working hard on making a bigger mess of things than you ever could. Some of the things you're reading about her almost seem like they can't possibly be true, but somehow you don't find any of this hard to believe at all really hope this psycho bitch kicks the bucket soon, just like her short-lived predecessor, and you have a feeling she'll probably will at this rate it's going. You check CNN's map again, which appears to be in constant flux. 
Various regions are changing shape, size, and color all the time. What is even happening? The revolution is spinning out of control. Would this still be happening if you stayed? Or would you have somehow managed to bring some semblance of order to the rebellion? One thing you know for sure is this. None of this would be happening if you hadn't given that insane, impetuous speech. Maybe the only conclusion you can draw with any conference is that losing your cool carries a cost, even if you do happen to be right about everything. You can't stop thinking of all the things you could have done better. You turn it over and over in your head, draining your energy again, killing your spoons, making you tired. However much sleep you got in the plane, you guess it wasn't enough. You begin to wonder if you could go to sleep for the rest of your life and you'll never feel fully rested. He's kind of back to being me again. She was me in chapter one, and then she was Hussy for a while, and then she was Kate for a long time. Now she's kind of me again. How can you- Someone's out of chat, so I can kind of rewrite the stream. You can't while Twitch is live, but as soon as I hit end on the stream, the full VOD will be up that you can scrub through. Oh, her beach towel came down to tuck it. That's a cool little... Nice transition. Ooh, look at that. That's cool, cool art. Finally, you made it. I said we'd meet again soon. We've met before? <laughs> well, not really. I've been speaking to you in the margins of your awareness. Oh, it's Hussy. I've been speaking to you in the margins of your awareness for a while. We've been having a pretty good time, actually. Like... Me and you in your sleep, and a whole bunch of others. Hi, it's... Oh no, it's Big Z! That's who's been talking! Z's been talking! Okay. Others? Who? Oh, just a bunch of fucking eavesdroppers. Nosy motherfuckers, curious interlopers. A vast peanut gallery of sorts. An army of total clowns bigger than even the one formerly at your command. Okay, I don't have the slightest fucking idea what you're talking about. What about Rydus? What about him? Where is he? He's gone. Are you... You know who I am. You said it yourself once. I am Z. I am the successor to Riotus, Lord Queen of the Jubilites. Hey look, she's gone full condus, just like I posted about. <laughs> you can really tell when her skin's uh, dark black like that. Yeah. And you could be the successor too. I'd say you finally qualify, but with that title comes the responsibility of making a real choice. Maybe the first real one you've made during the whole entire life. It isn't too late, you know. Here's the trailer. Are you saying I should go back? I'm not saying you should, I'm only saying it's not too late. All of it. Everything you worked so hard to build, it's all still there. Do you think they wouldn't welcome you back with open arms? Do you think they wouldn't go apeshit for your triumphant return? You see what's happening. The chaos, the power struggles, the splintering of the movement. Can you even imagine the euphoria that every jubilite in the world would feel if you rose from the ashes to reclaim your throne? I've thought about it, but Abby and I... <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? Whoa, music! We're turning it up. It's doing weird stereo stuff. As if I'm perfectly aware of how you feel about her, but she's only a mortal. She will slip away someday, just like all the other simps you've been dancing around the end of your streams, whereas you, you are faced with an opportunity. A chance that only one in untold trillions of people across the galaxy ever get to have. You could become a goddess on your own planet for all time to come. You could then achieve legendary status as Riotus did, on many other planets of your choosing. You could instruct new successors, sculpt them in your image, push their worlds to even greater heights than you achieved on your own. You could have immortality, stitching your name into the fabric of the universe itself. You could live not in the fragile, infinitesimal human body, but in the realm of dreams, of the ephemeral yet eternal. You could trade what pitiful clout you've earned online for the clout of vast interstellar populations who would worship you for countless generations across unfathomable expanses of time and space. All of this could still be yours. 
and it's just sitting there, waiting for you to take it back. So, you think it over. You could do all the crazy shit I just said, or, you know, we just go be happy. LOL. So you're putting this to me like I need to make a big choice here, but I already got on a damn plane and flew away. Didn't I already decide? I don't know. Did you? You're the one dreaming about it, after all. Which must mean you're still conflicted. A dream is just the mind struggling to struggle with the question, even while the body pleads for rest. So given that I finally have your full attention, and you may now appear to be rising to the occasion as a true successor, why don't we try this one last time? Try what? The fuck is all this? I guess you've been missing all this fun we had if you were kind of busy. But now you're ready to unlock these. Everybody's been waiting for this moment. It's time to choose, Miss Fifth Three Men. So what is the point of this again? This is supposed to help me, like, decide what to do? <laughs> no, not help you. It will enable you outright. The choice is before you now. What are these? These represent the duality facing you. A sword and a crown. So if I pick the sword, I go back and fight. <laughs> no. You still don't get it. You just aren't smart enough yet. Maybe you can become as smart and all-knowing as me someday, if you make the right choice, that is. Whatever. I don't care about being as smart as you. I just want to know what the fuck this is all about. So the crown there. I pick that and I reclaim my throne. I go back and become the supreme Han effects that everyone loves me for. Yes. The crown embodies a reno renewed commitment to your responsibility. Finishing what you started. The glory of infamy, the immortality and infamous adulation across the cosmos. All that I have mentioned and more, it can be yours again, with a simple affirmation of this choice. And yet, if you look closely, you will see it is not an ordinary crown. It is many times heavier, and its edges are razor sharp. It will draw blood and press into your skull. The weight of it applies to you, just as the many feet pushing on your once quaint little colony will mostly serve to perpetually remind you of a different reality. The one that weight could have been lifted. The reality where you choose to be free instead. Z, you must choose meat or candy! So then, the sword that represents this freedom, uh, how exactly? It's like I said, you could just be happy. You could be free of it all. Dispense with the grandiose together, all together. Leave the forefront of your revolution to those still stricken with a thirst for power, but never be so naive as to not understand that an abdication of this responsibility, the failure to take what you started and see it through to the bitter end, you will always carry a cost. It may not be felt right away, it may never be felt at all, but the decision to wash your hands of the blood you've spilled to come this far manifests itself as an invisible sword that will dangle over your head for the rest of your life. And maybe this weapon will drop swiftly. There would be certain mercy in that. Or perhaps it will remain suspended in the sky, creeping downward almost imperceptibly, until the day you pass away peacefully in your bed. The point is not that it will drop. The point of it is that it is there, and you will always feel its presence, such as the true peril in choosing what you perceive as freedom. So go on. You've waited long enough. It's time to reward your patience. What will you choose? Wait, I don't know if- Excuse me, Zen. Shen. Were you under the impression I was talking to you? You is a funny word that isn't a simple pronoun. You've always been so tricky, haven't they? As a clown gender individual, any pronouns apply to you. A single person. But all the same, many people at once can fit into the single pronoun, you. Just like a clown car. <laughs> How many people can fit into a clown car pronoun labeled you? Millions of clowns? Billions? When I was saying you, I was addressing them. Now they'd all like to have their way, Jen. Who are you to deprive them of this choice? What? This psychological is any good. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna save the game. Remember when this was about Car Cat? What do we choose? Are there people in chat? How do I do a poll? Can I do a poll in chat? Do a How do people do polls in chat? Yeah! There we go. Alright, one minute poll.
I'm gonna use the restroom while the poll's going. It's all to you guys. What we got? What we looking at? Crown. It is four votes crown, two votes sword. Ah! Why are you resisting? The clown car has made its choice. Shouldn't you feel grateful? Have the burden of this decision lifted for you? No matter, we can just try again. As many times as it takes if you insist on being stubborn. Oh, we're doing, uh... This is how... What was that game called? One Shot. This is how One Shot would have ended. One Shot was a game where you were a little cat person, but the cat person was making their own choices, and the whole game was about learning to make your own choices. And at the end of the game, you're presented with a choice of leave your friends forever or return to the cat person to their, their rightful home. And the cat person doesn't get to choose, then let the player choose, and it takes away all the themes of the game. So now Hussie's doing it right, and Z is resisting our choice. What the fuck? Hmm. Looks like our clowns really, really want to go with the crown. Anyway, you're still resisting. What's up with that? Ah! Wow, they really want to run with the crown, and yet you still put up a fight. I don't get it. Isn't this what you wanted? Didn't you want to be a successor? Fuck you! Incredible. They really, really, really want you to choose the crown. <laughs> that is some absolutely unreal consistency and dedication shown by, of all things considered, a massive group of complete idiots in your well-being or personal agency. Are you sure you really want to let them down after all this? Do we keep going, guys? Do we keep going? Crown! Stop trying to tell me! What to think? Oh my god! <laughs> homestuck things! Lots of homestuck things! Simple and clean starts playing. <laughs> Percy.
have a hussy work without a, a lesbian wedding. Oh, there goes Sugarberry. Better take the axe nickel. <laughs> Chew toy waffle pocket. Let's claim the throne. <laughs> Chew toy waffle pocket has been assassinated. Poe! Panama pork pie has taken the throne. <laughs> Aisha! Panama Pork Pie has been assassinated. The Sex Mime? Who is that? Is that Z again? Or B, I mean? Soda Jerk Thundernut. Wow, look at that. Pillbox Mumble Bitch. Well, Cowboy Breton. Poodle Boink Aristotle. <laughs> Pancake Jessifat. Oh my god. Blow up and then the cat UFO comes in. Oh no. Now it goes to another planet. It happens again. Wow. We made all these clown designs for this one little second. Those are great. If he ties it into Holmes like a last second just because he can, I swear to god. Like, we don't need that. Ah! <laughs> the opposite happened. That's great. JFK? Wow. Yeah, these are all famous uh, assassinations, huh? What am I looking at? About the sword. Yeah, a lot of open room there for interpretation at the end. All the clown fan adventures. Fanalonials. What an ending? We haven't ended yet. It's still going. Aww, okay, that's a good place to end it. That's it. Psycholonials.
Did the final thing become unlocked? Yes, it's the trailers. That's what the mystery option was the whole time? I guess the trailers are of the ending. And this is new, right? They must. This must be uploaded on Steam. Right before the game, the update went live today, all the Steam assets were updated. This must be the post Chapter Nine trailer for the page. She did the poster kissing thing. It was so long ago. It's like when John kissed his poster. Jack walking down. Still got it. He's still using the same panels. But he's still got it. The sword was never really a thing. Wow, that's the end right there. Of all the, the pink. Was that always that in the original trailer too? We just didn't know. <laughs> There's green, I mean Percy. There it is. Pyramid. friends now. <laughs> that, that's the image that was on the Steam page. It's a little bait and switch for people who haven't played yet. And that's why I thought for sure we were getting the alt timeline stuff. This is a lot of new art, isn't it? He must have made a lot of this while the game was updating. He went back and cleaned up some art to make a nicer trailer. Whoa! More of the other clowns. Oh, it's Hussy now. <laughs> Rip 2020. Then the other trailer's the one we already saw, right? Monologue. But the monologue was the last thing in the game. Yeah, this is the one we've already seen. I'll just buy the music. Chapters. One new here. Oh yeah, look. All the successors have been listed now. Beat Pootie Chunk. Duggle. Turtle Burger CDXX. Is it C like a thousand or ten thousand? I will go look, yes. Successors to the Secretary of Jape. In A.
nimble buzz at a Katamari cousin. Godhead successors, Riotus, Nozzle Burp, Pasquilus, Nine Scion, Sheepbug, Yonder- oh my god. He named them all too. Sna- uh, Smash Lantern. That's great. Yeah, let's see if the other choice- I, I think it'll just change some of the dialogue while it's happening. I don't think it will actually change the ending. Oh. Our save files have been deleted and replaced with an epilogue, it looks like. Hey, it's me again. Don't worry, not that fuck crazy fucking godhead version of myself you just saw me incinerate with brain fire or whatever it is I did there. It's the real me this time. Chen, I can understand what you're going for here, or maybe you aren't. Maybe you just stumbled on the save file by accident? All I can say is what I'd be trying if I were you. See, I used to be a pretty big time gamer, and for the sake of completionism, I'd want to set up a save file right before the final dream, so I could proceed to spam the hell out of all the possible sword crown combos to see if I get a different ending. I also used to do a lot of coding, and there were, what, five binary sword crown choices in a row? So if I were on your shoes, I'd know right away that's 32 possible permutations to try out, which sounds like a huge pain in the ass, but if you're a true gamer like I was, you gotta do it, right? The thing is, given how much you were just trying to mess with me, I'm not sure if you even deserve the courtesy. But since I ran away, I've been trying to do things differently. Not hang on to stupid grudges so much, you know? So, in the spirit of rising above our petty grievances, I figured I'd do you a solid by deleting all your save files and leaving a note here letting you not to bother with all that. No matter what pattern of choices you make, they all lead to the same ending. That's because it was always my choice to make. Not yours. And I was always going to choose the sword, regardless of whatever hoops you made me jump through. For all that's been made of free will and the significance of my choices versus yours, funny thing is, I don't think it was ever much of a choice for me at all. I honestly think the path I chose was the only one I was even capable of. I love her too much to even think about leaving her again. Maybe I owe you a proper letter. As long as I'm going to the trouble of rolling up this note, shoving it in a bottle, and lobbing it in the ocean. Hard to say where it ended up. I guess that's wherever you happen to be right now, but then I'm sure all those shores look the same to a bottle that's been adrift a long time. And in a sense, all shores pretty much are the same, aren't they? Just places where the ocean finally decides to leave the dirt alone, and benevolently allows us a little space to walk about. It's always made me happy to think about the ocean. Puts me in a good mood. So in keeping with the good vibes, why don't we stretch out a little here? Give my final thoughts more breathing room. Hang on, I'm going to do the thing where we hop over the left side of the screen so I can put more words down at once. Maybe you're wondering how long it's been since that final dream I had. There's no reason to get too precise about it. Let's just say it's been years. Long enough for me to settle down a little more, reflect on what that was really about, and finally get around to writing you this letter. If I did this any sooner, maybe there'd be a few things I'd be too proud to admit, so I'm glad I waited. Too proud to admit what? Okay, here's one. For a few years after I got here, I felt pretty guilty about destroying America. It felt pretty crazy for me to think that after all my big talk and the guilt certainly had nothing to do with changing my mind in regards to the issues I have with my own country. It's just been making it a big mess and leaving a bunch of other people to kill each other as a way of haunting me for a while. I checked up on the news pretty often at first and sometimes even cried when I read about it, but slowly I stopped checking as much. I felt less guilty little by little. Eventually I lost interest in checking in on it at all. I haven't read a story about the place formerly known as America in years, except the glance at a stray headline here and there. It is the exact same feeling I used to have it as an American when I would catch a headline about some other foreign country where she crazy shit was going on, like, not my business, too complicated, involving names I'm unfamiliar with and political parameters that escaped my ability to keep up with long ago. In the end, America is just another big landmass like all the others around the world. It's the same shape as it ever was, covered mostly by the same people who were there when I left, and I'm sure they're all trying to get in by in much the same way as they always were. The only thing that really changed is that I erased all the imaginary fucking lions that got drawn over the continent by a bunch of completely deranged people a couple hundred years ago. Good rinse that fake shit. So, I get a funny feeling when I look at maps now. They're worthless now because every, every, nobody can update them fast enough in this global political climate. <laughs> Watching Google Maps go through its various contortions over the years has been hilarious, kinda. I've kinda adapted to imposing myself, like, line blindness on myself. I look at the continental US and I just... Ignore whatever lines the cartographers are peddling these days, and 
and focus on the shape of the water hugging the land. Same as it ever was, and it's sort of comforting in that sense. There's that funny looking hook shape that makes up Cape Cod. Below you have the decapitated dragon. That's how I used to see it when I was a kid. Martha's vineyard has a dragon head. You can see it if you imagine the southwestern tip is a little snout, and then its stumpy little body is Nantucket. Even when I was on the island acting like a warlord, glancing at a map would always make me laugh for this reason. There's the dead dragon again. <laughs> there was this crazy character who used to mutilate her stuffed dragons. Looking at those islands always reminded me of her. I don't know, I just shit posting at this point, Scarkles. But what I'm trying to say is, I just really love islands. I've always been naturally drawn to them, fantasizing about them, making absurd getaway plans, focusing on certain islands, and then I literally did run away to an island twice. And now I think I understand why I was so obsessed with them. They can't be easily defined by the invisible bullshit lines people like to draw on maps. Their shapes are always naturally carved out by the ocean that surrounds them, and people can never tell the ocean what to do. The only influence people can have on the ocean is through climate change, and all that does is make the damn thing bigger. It makes it bigger, almost like wakes it up. Its slumber is what allowed us to walk on all these bits of dry dirt in the first place. Once it slowly stirs from its slumber, it begins to remind us all who was in charge all along. Who has the ultimate ability to drown this planet of a self-important infestation known as humanity? Probably still have a little ways to go before that happens, so we might as well spend reflecting on the very suicidal tendencies we indulge in to keep the doomsday clock ticking away with inch by watery inch. Which makes me think of... God, I almost hate to even bring her up. Almost like a sour note here, but this was supposed to be about the truth, and I think the truth is... I still think about her all the time. When you kill somebody while looking them right in the eyes, even if they deserved it, they stick with you forever. That last look on Jocelyn's dumb clowny face is turned into my brain for life. It's not like how I felt about destroying America for a while. I've never felt guilty about her. She was pretty awful and she had to go, but since I was her executioner, she became part of me for good. Just like in the old fandom days. Whatever garbage we read or played got soaked up by our souls and became a permanent part of our identities. She and I went way back to when we were kids mingling in the same fandoms. Except I never paid much attention to her or cared about her at all. She was just some rando like to me. There's a lot of people like that in fandom. It's not like you can be fucking besties with everybody. She kept trying to get in my face, but... Honestly, I barely even remember this because she was just some nobody trying to make something happen with me, but I just wasn't interested. I was like 14. I had other shit going on. School? Depression? I don't know. I can't remember a single interaction we had back then because all her pesky shit was just that unimportant, but... She probably didn't like the fact that I kept brushing her off. So later, while I was going through some huge life problems, she... spun up some bullshit about how the bad things I said online were the height of immoral behavior. As if she could give the slightest fucking shit about virtue. <laughs> just an easy way to run someone to the ground once you decide you don't like them. She knew that. Everyone does, I think. But then lo and behold, she shows up later dressed as a clown, kissing my ass. As if nothing ever happened. Drives me crazy about thinking about this. Not because of what a snake she was, it's more than that. It's the obsession, but even weirder was the fucking carelessness about how she played it. She didn't even delete her old account before going undercover. She was all strutting around in front of me, taking off her coat, showing off her tattoo. I think on some level she wanted me to know. Wanted to be like, I'm back, bitch, time for round two or three or whatever in this one-sided game we were playing that only she cared about. Actually, it's the only- oh. Actually, it's the only thing about this that makes me feel kind of sad for her. All that posturing and conniving, I- The only explanation is she just liked me the whole time, wanted me to notice her. Or maybe more like, hate liked me? Bear in mind the fandoms we used to roll in were pretty whack and gave us all some weird ideas about human interaction and romance. And the most fucked up thing about this is, I kinda get it. I see where she was coming from practically every step of the way. She was just as empty inside and earlier she was trying to use sick up, made up rivalry with me to fill the void. Then later when I started a clown revolution, she jumped all over that. Because she could use it to make herself feel more and then maybe that would fill the foot instead. Is she unique in this way? Hell no. We were all the same. We are all empty inside, grasping for ways to make ourselves whole, and I was too. Remember at the beginning when I was drunk and depressed in my department? Wondering what I was about? Same shit she was probably going through. She coped with demented, phony persecution campaigns, and I coped with... You saw how all that went. Literally everybody's doing this. 
They could never tell them that's what they're doing. This is the night with their dying breath, and I would have too if they tried to come at me while I was in full psycho mode. Everybody's got their cover story to deflect any honest attempt to penetrate the layers of bullshit. Um, actually, it's about advocating for a higher standard of virtue in the media we consume. <laughs> Alright, whatever you say, pal. Um, actually, it's about ethics and game journalism. Sure, man, those totally make a ton of sense. Um, actually, it's about holding individuals accountable for their previously problematic behavior. For sure, nothing sus about that at all. Um, actually, it's all about the pride I have for my nation. Right, never heard that one before. It's definitely not an idea that repeatedly led to insanely bad problems or anything, so keep having fun with that. The sad thing is, the harder you bang out the table and insist your cover stories are the real reason why you're tripping on some preposterous shit, the flimsier they appear to everybody watching. After a while, people catch on that you're mostly trying to convince yourself with the cover story and not others so much. You just got so much invested in believing you brought all into all this shit for the reasons you're saying you are and not for the sake of filling the void inside you. Because if you're forced to admit that, the void would open right back up, and there it is again. All that pain and existential misery. And would that happen, right? So sometimes we even aid and abet each other in keeping our mutual bullshit cycles spinning. Like a sick kind of treaty. You don't call my bullshit if I don't call yours, because then where would we be? Are you nodding along with all this very wisely? Well, I should sure hope, hope the fuck so, because it's all true as shit. Maybe you're wondering, okay, that sounds cool and all, Shen, but what's the actual answer? How do you put a stop to this? How do you kill your own cover stories and fill the void with something better? I'm not that good at coming up with solutions. It's more like, my skill is identifying problems and destroying them utterly, like what I did to America. But that, was that a solution? I don't know. Probably not. So I can say a few things that might fuck you up forever, but don't hold your breath waiting for me to give you that one neat trick that finally unfucks your Humpty Dumpty ass back together again. Here's the cheap answer I could give you. It's love. Love will pull you out of that pit of despair and fill the hole in your soul for good. It's really tempted to believe that, especially since... I guess that's pretty much what happened to me. That's just me, though. And it'd be stupid to take the lessons from the insane shit I just went through and try to broadly apply them to somebody I know nothing about. It's also just... wrong. I could sit here in the comfort of this Fijian paradise and tell you, if only you could get out there and find the perfect waifu, you'll finally be healed. But then I'd just be setting you up to chase something else, and you probably won't find it right away. Or maybe never at all. And you might feel bitter and angry about that, and take it out on whichever poor fool you were chasing, and sink right back behind another fucking cover story that's even worse than the one you started with. So, this can't be about chasing something. In fact, investing yourself in chasing anything kind of sucks, and just... Announce the same blind alley, whether it's a person, or an ideology, or some other big shit. So that's a no on love. Well, not quite. It's a no and a yes, but I had to drop the no part first, because that's important. But to get the yes part, you need to understand where I'm coming from. It's way too simple to say, uh, is way too simple to say, Abby swooped in and her love healed and support healed me completely. That's not what I mean. Think of it this way. Imagine you filled the void with your soul with whatever brand of horseshit someone hooked you on, you hooked yourself on, or you're filing in the abyss. You're miserable and you don't even realize attacking people, obsessed with pointless crap, regurgitating the same talking points forever, sinking deeper into this fucked up place every day. It's not good for you, but you just can't see it. Now imagine there's someone nearby. Maybe you just met them or they've always been there. They're just smiling, but you became blind in their smile. You took it for granted because it was always just there. They can see what you're putting yourself through, but you can't. Imagine they jump into the abyss with you to try to pull you out. They do it at an enormous cost to themselves and return the favor by fighting them at every turn. They keep trying, and there's no reward for them at all except getting to see you become a happier person. If it isn't what love is, then I don't think love exists. Back to this sort of generic question I asked. Is love the answer? The no part is obvious, but the yes part is kind of subtle. You can't go chasing love to cure yourself, but yet I still think it's an essential ingredient to getting better. Maybe the trick is to realize it's not in the short supply as you think. People want to see you do better and be happier everywhere. If you keep shutting them all out by parroting your cover stories over and over, you'll swear they don't exist too. Just like I used to. Does that mean Abby totally healed me? That's complicated too. Some things are just a part of me that will never disappear. Jocelyn's shocked face. Stuff that happened with my parents. 
the aerial view of an entire nation on fire because of one little speech I gave. So I'll never be healed. That's just the wrong word. Mainly it just feels so good that somebody cares about me this way. I feel so good all the time, every day. I'm never in a bad mood anymore. It's kind of crazy. Sometimes I wonder if someone like me even deserves to feel this good, but I don't care if I don't. When I'm happy, she's happy, and that's what makes it worth trying to stay this way. For the few, first few years we lived here, every night I could swear I saw a sword in the sky, like a little constellation of stars shaped like a sword, pointing right down at me. It bugged me, always made me think of the choice I made. But after a while, I'd look up at the same part of the sky, and I couldn't see it anymore. I'd strain to see it, but it just wasn't there. It's not like the stars disappeared or anything, or rearranged themselves, it was... More like my mind couldn't bring itself to do whatever it was doing to trick me into seeing it. And kind of like the illusion of America itself, I started forgetting I could ever see it at all. So when my godhead dream self is ranting all menacing about choosing the sword, like ooh, being happy with it might come back to haunt you. I want a load of shit. What's gonna happen to me? I'm gonna die? Of course I'm gonna die. I'll die of old age or some other shit before that. Just the reality everyone deals with. It doesn't matter. I made the right choice, and I'm not scared of anything as long as I'm with her. We have a good life here, and we'll enjoy it for however long we get to have it. Our horse Percy grew up to be so strong and beautiful, and we love him dearly. For a while we started wondering about adopting a kid, but they still don't let me do that here. That's fine though, because we decided a big beautiful horse is more than enough to have a family for everybody. I'm gonna get going now. It's been fun in a sort of lopsided way. You could see me, but I couldn't see you. You got to obsess over me. I got to fuck with my head by trying to insist your decisions for my life are better than mine somehow. I'm not mad at all though, and honestly, I appreciate all the simping you've done. I'm very impressed, but it's my final wish for you that at the moment I disappear from your life, you'll begin to realize that once I'm gone, the only person left to impress you is yourself. Yes. This emoji. Us. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I'm... Um... I could talk four hours about what he meant there. Everything there was... multiple meanings over. About the fandom at whole. About some of the people he's interacted with. You about me. Maybe I'm just reading into it because this, we that's how we look at media. That's exactly what he was talking about. I need to go. Thank you all for joining me. This stream's been a hell of a ride. Um, I'm moving out. I'm moving out in a couple weeks. I chose my crown. I was given the choice of running away with the boyfriend, and I turned it down. We would have lived in the middle of nowhere. A little house. Just like an happy now. I'm not doing that. Go ahead head first into things. So after I move, I'll be streaming a lot, so I'll make people talk to you all later.